G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to take you through four really helpful techniques that will improve your breathing efficiency. Now these techniques are wonderful for anyone who values performance in terms of maybe aerobic performance or just athletic performance in general because it tends to be a missing piece that a lot of people don't necessarily focus on as opposed to strength and conditioning and training hard and diet and all those sorts of things as well. Uh, the information in this video is also really important for anyone that's dealing with suboptimal breathing capacity at the moment, whether that be because of disease or decreased lung function for whatever reason, these exercises will hopefully help you improve the efficiency of your breathing as well and optimize what you've got access to at the moment to hopefully improve your quality of life and what you can do day to day. So the first technique that we want to touch on revolves taking a good hard look at your daily postures and shapes. And the reason for this is we know that your body functions best in certain shapes and anatomical positions. So for example, with your shoulder, we know that you have full access to your full shoulder capacity and full shoulder function when your shoulders are back and comfortably in a good position. And if you drift out of that by slouching, then all of a sudden you don't have access to your full shoulder range, you don't have access to your full shoulder stability and full shoulder strength, and what suffers is day-to-day -day performance and function. And your lung capacity and your breathing capacity is no different. So we know that your lungs require your rib cage to move and to function normally, in order to express themselves optimally. So in order to put your lungs and trunk in an optimal shape, we want to make sure that you've drawn yourself up into a really nice posture. And we don't want you to feel like you're overextending and tilting your rib cage away from your belly button. We also don't want you to feel like your rib cage is tilting down towards your belly button because what you'll find hopefully here is if you're in a really nice upright position and you take a deep breath in, if you pay close attention to how that felt in terms of um, how easy that was to do, but also how deep or how full of a breath you could take, we can then compare it to the same shape when you're in a, a more flexed, slouchy position. So if you take another deep breath in here, you shouldn't feel like you can inhale as deeply. It should feel a little bit more restricted in this shape. And then what you might also find is if you overextend here in a fully extended shape, and perform the same movement, you shouldn't feel like you, again, have full access or the same amount of access to your lung capacity as you do if your rib cage is stacked really well on top of your abdomen. So when you're sort of trying to get the benefits of your full lung capacity, you may not necessarily be in this bad position at all times, but if you do spend more time than not in a less than ideal body shape, then those factors are going to transfer through to your activity in some way. Whether that's accumulating more stiffness and tightness through your trunk, which we'll touch on in a second, or when you start to fatigue, your body is going to look for the positions and the shapes that it's most accustomed to, that you've trained yourself in the most. If you're a runner, for example, it's very likely that as you start to fatigue, you might find it's easier for you to start to adopt this more rounded shape because that's what you've trained your body to do. So the first technique that we want to get you to implement is, sim is simply just trying to be in more upright positions more often, allow your lungs to function in this position, allow your motor patterns to be built around this position as opposed to a more um, slouchy, um, disadvantageous shape. So the second technique that we want to touch on here, and we sort of touched on this briefly in sort of technique number one, is that we want to take a really good hard look at the mobility and the function of your rib cage. And again, what a lot of people don't think of when we're talking about breathing efficiency is we sometimes forget that your lungs exist and function within your rib cage. So if we start to stiffen and decrease the amount of mobility available to you through your rib cage, not only are we robbing you of motion through that rib cage in terms of rotation and flexion extension in a traditional sense that we're all used to looking for, but as we start to exhale and inhale through that rib cage, we're essentially encasing that rib cage in a, a layer of rust. And what that means is your ability to expand that rib cage as you breathe in and out can be decreased and can become suboptimal if the joints around the back, the tissue around the back and the tissue around the front become stiff, tight and, uh, and restricted from being in a less than ideal shape day to day. And the more mechanical consequence of this is if we're consistently resting on our rib cage, our shoulders are dropping and rolling forwards and hanging off the rib cage, we're consistently kicking a hinge through that rib cage, those increased uh, forces and that increased load going through your rib cage 
will inevitably ask your tissue to become stiffer and tighter and more restricted to handle that excess load. So if you want to make sure that your trunk is functioning a lot better to allow your breathing to be more optimal and more efficient going forwards. And if you've been a fan of the channel, you'll know that there are a number of different ways to mobilize a stiff thoracic spine. We can do so with a foam roller. We can do so with a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to go for the peanuts. So you can grab two tennis balls, two lacrosse balls, tape them together if you want to. But this can give you a really nice stimulus in real time to compare both sides to see which side is the most stiff and which side might be robbing you of that optimal breathing efficiency. So what I want to get you to do is take the ball. We'll start in between your shoulder blades. We can move down and up from there. And you can do this leaning up against the wall if you want to. It's just a little bit easier if you're lying down on the ground. Have the, the ball or balls placed about mid shoulder blade level. Now you can relax down onto the ground if you want to. You can have your hands behind your head, a pillow or a towel rolled up to support your neck. Choose the position that feels most comfortable to you. But the point of this is, we want to move the balls around until you find something that feels a little bit restricted. Now, it may not necessarily be tender because we're not necessarily dealing with a painful condition here. We're looking for something where you don't feel like the ball sinks in as easily uh, on one side compared to the other. Because it may not be a segment of your back that's stiff. It may actually be one side compared to the other, which is robbing you of that breathing efficiency and that breathing capacity that you deserve to have. So again, once you've found a segment or a level that feels a little bit restricted, just gently roll to one side and then the other side just to get a sense of which side you feel the ball sinks in better and then choose the other side. So make sure, so for me, this side feels a little bit more restricted than the other side. So I'm going to roll over a little bit until I feel like there's a good amount of pressure there. You can just gently let the ball press in here. We can stay here. You can also take a deep breath into the ball. You can hold that deep breath and you can squeeze the tissue in between the ball and your trunk, tense that tissue up and then relax. And what you'll find is hopefully the ball will sink in a little bit deeper. It won't feel as restricted or maybe won't feel as tender as well if that is there. What you can also do here to take this to another level is you can then use your arm mobility here, take your arms above your head to again, shear free some of this tissue restriction. Because again, what a lot of people sort of don't necessarily realize with this is that you need mobility through your upper back for normal shoulder mobility. So as I come up here, I can start to feel like I get a little bit of restriction on one side, but if I gently just oscillate backwards and forwards here, what we should hopefully find is in a very short amount of time, I can now start to get down a little bit lower to the surfaces that I'm on. And in a very short amount of time, I've mobilized that segment a little bit more than I had previously. So if you can move the ball up and down that spine based on what you feel you need access to, then you can very, very quickly start to take away some of the restrictions that might be encasing your rib cage in a restricted, rusty exoskeleton, stopping you from having access to that full breathing capacity and that breathing efficiency that you deserve to have. So the third technique that we can turn to to optimize your breathing efficiency revolves around taking a look at how you actually breathe. So let me know in the comments down below, are you someone who breathes diaphragmatically, whereby when you take a breath in, your belly comes out, and when you breathe out again, your belly comes in, or are you a chest breather, where your chest comes out when you breathe in and it falls when you breathe out? Depending on which version of a breather you are, this can really tell us a lot about how efficient your breathing is, because we know that diaphragmatic breathing is a far more energy efficient way to breathe when compared to chest breathing. So what we often tend to find is if you're walking around, you're more likely to be a diaphragmatic breather in that instance as opposed to someone who is at the end of a long run. And the reason for this is generally dependent on the oxygen demands of that activity. So if you're going for a long run, at some point you may not be getting enough oxygen into your system with a fully optimized diaphragmatic breath than you could if you had a chest breathing pattern. And the reason for this is we can start to integrate or use or access the muscles of your chest, shoulders and upper back to really open and close that rib cage, to open your lungs, to draw that air into your system. We can do that a lot more with chest breathing than what we could diaphragmatically. But there is a trade-off in the fact that that is a more energy inefficient uh, system. It's a more anaerobic system, which will start to feed into that lactic acid top threshold as opposed to diaphragmatic breathing. If you can retrain yourself to diaphragmatically breathe, you'll start to make your system more energy efficient and make your breathing more efficient on top of that. So what we wanna get you to do is, you can lie down here if you want to, but if you take your hands and place them onto your belly, 
There's a really obvious cue that you can use to get a sense of whether your belly is going out when you breathe in and whether it's coming back in again when you breathe out. This, instead of just thinking about this as belly breathing, imagine that there's a line where your rib cage meets your abdomen. And essentially that line isn't a straight line, it does curve at the base of your rib cage, but that junction is essentially where your diaphragm sits. And what you'll find is with your, with your hands on your belly, you will feel a little bit more sort of lower rib cage excursion when you do this, just so long as you're not finding that your chest is the thing that's rising and falling. It'll be more of an expansion as opposed to a lifting from your rib cage. And ultimately we will see that rib cage extend or expand the deeper your breath is, but we want to make sure that you're playing in that space where your diaphragm is still working as long as it possibly can before your rib cage kicks in. So the fourth technique that we can address here to try and optimize your breathing efficiency is again another version of this question of how you're actually breathing. So again, let me know down in the comments below, are you someone who traditionally breathes through your mouth or are you someone who breathes through your nose more often than not? Because again, much like diaphragmatic breathing versus chest breathing, this can have strong ramifications for how energy efficient your system becomes and ultimately how efficient your breathing capacity tends to be. And the reason for that is your nasal passage is part of your respiratory system and your mouth is obviously part of your digestive system. So if you're always breathing in and out through your mouth, you're not necessarily gaining full access to your respiratory system and all the benefits of having a nose and a nasal passage in terms of your immune response and all those sorts of things. So much like we said in the previous point where if you chest breathe, the muscles of your rib cage have to work a lot harder to get the oxygen into your system, it's the same thing as a mouth breather. As a nasal breather, you might find that you'll more naturally access that diaphragm because that's what your brain and nervous system is wired to do. If you can pick times throughout the day or moments throughout the day when you're stationary and then also while you're moving around, potentially exercising, to consciously close your mouth if possible and breathe through your nose for as long as you possibly can, then you'll start to improve that threshold before you feel your body has to default into this more sort of anaerobic, um, sympathetic breathing pattern that takes more energy to run long term. So in an ideal world, if you're walking around or running or doing weights or doing some form of exercise, if you can try and comfortably nasal breathe for as long as possible, you will increase that capacity over time to do those things that I said. But the other things that you'll start to get is you'll start to find your body will default to that process more often. So if you're someone who tends to snore a lot, you might find you're a mouth breather and something as simple as a little bit of tape across the front of your mouth while you're sleeping might prompt your body to nasal breathe more often and then over a couple of weeks, potentially a couple of months, it can really help optimize that nasal breathing pattern and you might find that your energy efficiency while you're exercising and going about your day-to-day -day life increases and it will also improve your ability to optimize your breathing efficiency as well. Now tying the last two points together, it's really important to understand how you can become a chest breather and how you can become a mouth breather without actually realizing that. This is essentially a conversation that's tying a lot of things in together that relates back to sitting. So if you're someone who sits a lot throughout the day and you sit into this default shape a lot, you get sucked into a bad position, or you're stressed a lot throughout the day, you might find that you more naturally will adopt a mouth breathing pattern and a chest breathing pattern in those moments. For example, if you see any dog, when they're relaxed and they're chilled, they're gonna have their mouth closed and they're gonna nasally breathe for as long as they need to. When they're up and about, say it's more of a hot day or they're running around exercising, they are more likely gonna be a mouth breather and panting because that's the next step that their body has to graduate to to try and increase the oxygen demands for whatever reason, whether it's to cool them down or to, to fuel them going forward. So it's ultimately really important to understand that excess sitting or lots of sitting, depending on what you can manage and what you can't manage, is really important in terms of decreasing the efficiency of um, your breathing pattern. And if you're someone who is always in bad shapes, you've developed some stiffness through that thoracic spine, that rib cage, you're breathing through your chest a lot and you're breathing through your mouth a lot, ultimately it can be a consequence of sitting and it's something that may be robbing you of breathing capacity that you desperately need if you're someone who has some lung conditions or some breathing capacity, capacity that you would love to have to improve your performance athletically. I hope that was genuinely helpful. I hope that gave you something you can take away and use in this video. And we'll see you in the next one.